Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Erodispace. I am Dr. Somendrasan Mahanti and today we will discuss about the volumetric efficiency in internal combustion engines. So first, I will define the volumetric efficiency in terms of volume flow rate and then by mass flow rate, we will discuss the different factors which affect the volumetric efficiency. Then I will give you information about the volumetric efficiency of petrol engine and diesel engine, why variation in volumetric efficiency in petrol and diesel engine is absorbed, then what we do to improve the volumetric efficiency in internal combustion engines. So coming to the definition, it may be defined in terms of the volume flow rate, in terms of volume flow rate, the volumetric efficiency is defined as the actual volume of air done into the system to the rate at which the volume is displaced by the system at ambient condition. So this is air when it comes to your diesel engine and it is air fuel mixture when it comes to your petrol engine. Then we will define the volumetric efficiency in terms of mass flow rate. On the basis of mass flow rate, volumetric efficiency may be defined as the actual mass of air drawn into the engine in a given period to the theoretical mass which should have been drawn in during the same time based upon the total piston displacement of the engine, temperature and pressure of the surrounding atmosphere. In this case also, it is air when it comes to your diesel engine and it is your air fuel mixture when it comes to the petrol engine. Then we will discuss about the different factors which affect the volumetric efficiency of internal combustion engine. So there are four important factors which affect the volumetric efficiency and they are the exhaust gas in the clearance volume, second one is the density of the fresh charge, the third one is design of the inlet and exhaust manifold and the last one is the time of inlet and exhaust valves. These four factors are the major factors which affect the volumetric efficiency of internal combustion engine. So let us discuss these factors one by one. The exhaust gas is always there in the clearance volume because whatever may be the measures you take, clearance volume can never be eliminated because the valves are to be operated. So there is always a space between the top dead center position of the piston and the cylinder head. So after the exhaust stroke, some amount of exhaust gases at high pressure is trapped in the clearance volume. So when the piston moves from TDC to BDC during the suction stroke of the next cycle, first these exhaust gases which are at high pressure will first expand and once the pressure of the exhaust gases falls below the atmospheric pressure, the air in case of diesel engine or the air fuel mixture in case of petrol engine will be drawn into the engine cylinder because there is a tendency of fluids to flow from high pressure zone to low pressure zone. So as pressure was higher during the initial phases of the suction stroke, there will be no flow of the charge or the air fuel mixture during that part of the suction stroke. So this is a factor which affects the volumetric efficiency. The second one is the density of the fresh charge. When the fresh charge is done into the engine cylinder, actually it mixes up with some of the residual gases as well as it gets heat from the cylinder walls which are maintained at very high temperature. Although we make some sort of cooling arrangement, but the temperature that is maintained in cylinder walls is much higher than the atmospheric temperature. So as a result of this, the fresh charges do receive heat and on receiving heat they undergo expansion because whatever may be the state of the substance, 
be it solid, be it liquid, be it gas. When it receives heat, it expands. So due to this, the amount of the charge or air which is to be drawn in will be less than what would have happened had there been no heat interaction between the cylinder walls and the fresh charge. The third factor which affects the volumetric efficiency is the design of the inlet and adjust manifold. The efforts should be made to ensure that maximum amount of charge or air as the case may be is drawn into the engine cylinder and maximum amount of adjust gases is to be liberated to the surroundings. A proper design of the intake and adjust manifold effectively improves the volumetric efficiency. The last one is the time of the inlet and adjust valves. This is also an important factor which affects the volumetric efficiency. But to understand this, I will briefly discuss the valve timing diagram. I will take a separate lecture to discuss the valve timing diagram where I will consider both the low speed as well as high speed engines. But one thing that you should understand that contrary to the assumption that we make while discussing the four stroke SI and CI engine that valves are open at dead centers and are closed at dead centers is factually incorrect. Theoretically, the inlet valve is opened at top dead center and is closed at bottom dead center. But in actual case, it is open few degrees before the top dead center and is closed few degrees after the bottom dead center. What is the reason for that? Because if you open the inlet valve at the top dead center position, by the time it is completely open, it would have covered some angle. So there will be less admission of the charge. So for that reason, the inlet valve is open few degrees before the TDC so that when it reaches TDC, it is completely in open position. Similarly, even if you close the inlet valve at the BDC, by the time it is completely closed, it would have covered some angle. The same principle is adopted when it comes to the adjust valves also. Because if the adjust valve is open at BDC, then by the time it is completely open, it would have covered some angle. So for that reason, it is open few degrees before the BDC so that by the time it reaches BDC, it would be in completely open position. Similarly, even if you close the adjust valve at the TDC, by the time it is completely closed, it would have covered some angles. So from this diagram, what we make out that there is a period in which both the inlet as well as the adjust valves are in open position. This is what we call your valve overlap period. Now, we will analyze what effect it has got with the volumetric efficiency. As for some period of the suction stroke, both the inlet and adjust valves are in open position. Some person of the fresh charge may leave through the adjust valve. So, this actually affects the volumetric efficiency. So now we have discussed in detail the different factors which affect the volumetric efficiency. Now we will consider the volumetric efficiency of the petrol engine as well as the diesel engine. Usually the volumetric efficiency of the petrol engine is between 80 to 85 percent and the volumetric efficiency of a diesel engine is slightly higher is in the range of 85 to 90 percent. Now the question arises why the volumetric efficiency of diesel engine is better than that of petrol engine. The lower volumetric efficiency in petrol engine is due to the presence of the throttle body. Throttle body actually regulates the flow of charge depending upon the speed variations. So as it regulates this, the amount of charge drawn may be less. But when it comes to your diesel engines, 
majority of the diesel engines do not have a throttle body because usually the flow of air is not regulated what is regulated is the flow of fuel or the injection of diesel there may be some modern engines which is having the throttle body that is absorbed particularly when exhaust gas recirculation is being employed to discuss about exhaust gas recirculation i will take a separate lecture but it would be completely erroneous to tell that all the diesel engines do not have the throttle body particularly the cases where exhaust gas recirculation arrangement is there they do have the throttle body now the volumetric efficiency of all naturally aspired engines where the charge is taken in at atmospheric pressure is less than 100% but the volumetric efficiency can be significantly improved by providing supercharging and turbocharging where the pressure at the entry level is increased greater than the atmospheric pressure to discuss about the supercharging and turbocharging i'll take a separate lecture but you should remember that volumetric efficiency can be improved by providing all these arrangements so i sincerely believe that this lecture of volumetric efficiency of internal combustion engine will be extremely useful for all of you because we have discussed volumetric efficiency in details beyond the definition because what is required that you should develop the concept thank you very much for watching this video if you have any doubts related to this lecture you may ask me so that i will try to answer that hope to see you for another lecture in my youtube channel erudispace